All right, here it is September 9th, uh, 2024, and I've had a few moments to uh, collect my thoughts, and I wanted to make a short video or a longest video about my experience harvesting Kernza this year, or my experience overall with Kernza. And I'll, I'll flat out stay at the beginning. I am, at this point, not disillusioned, that's the wrong word. I am very, it's not a product for me. It's not something that I would encourage anybody else to grow. But again, your experience could be different. Uh, three years ago, we, we drilled this about this time, and so we've had two harvests. Last year was very disappointing um, in terms of the yield. It was about a tenth of what we expected, so I made some changes. This year, there's 24 acres and uh, of Kernza. Primarily to, I was following all the recommendations either from the co-op or various experts, people who have been developing and working in this on a production side, through the Land Institute and University of Minnesota, uh, I made a few videos before about my experience, but uh, this one will probably be the last one. So that said, what did I do differently this year? Um, it was brought to my attention that my fan speed was way too high. Contrary to what the experts and the advice was, I didn't want to be at 800 CFM or feet per minute or RPMs or whatever that measure is on deer. I wanted to be at 300. Well, for that, you need a separate kit, a slow fan speed pulley kit. And the kit, the pulley and the belt are $500. And it's not super complicated, but I ended up paying deer for two hours of their time to put it on. Because I wasn't sure they had never put one on. So there's another $300. And now I'm going to have to change it back to the other pulley. So there's, let's say it's $1,000 just for that, to get that fan speed. Now what that low fan speed promised to do was, I was told last year that the reason I was getting such a low yield, it was blowing everything out the back because my fan speed was so high. The Kerns itself is such a tiny grain that it is the lightest thing, except for the husks that have been shelled of Kernza. So you're, any, anything that's blowing out, you're going to blow a lot of that out. So you don't want to blow out the grain. You want to get to a seed cleaner. Um, that hasn't been the case. As you can see here, we had to re-thresh this. I'll get to that in a second. But what you're seeing out here is probably from... 200 150 bushels of grain that's gone re-threshed and I modified the feeder house on the combine so I could re-thresh it from that gravity box and this is what's out the back now I want this stuff in the combine this is stuff there is grain in there there's kernel there's stems there's whatever but there you know this is the stuff that by volume this is probably a third maybe a quarter of what is in the so-called clean grain tank. So I'm throwing all this away. You go to all this trouble to harvest it. And again, this is what with the fan speed at 300. And my top sieve, the chaffer, is at 8 to get rid of the big stems. And the bottom sieve is at 1. It's almost closed. I mean, I can't get it to go any closer. There's, there's crud in there. I can't get it to go to zero. But this is as kerns of friendly as this combine will get. And this is a 9560 STS rotor combine. Um, it's combined wheat successfully, oats. Small wire concaves are in there. Rotor speed was, I think, about 900. Concaves set it to. Fan speed, like I said, was 300. Um, I was on the high speed uh, feeder house, you know, to, to thresh the grain. So the problem I'm having, to get this in a saleable state, it has to flow out of a grain tote, a one-ton grain tote. So after it comes out of the combine, it's going to go to a seed cleaner. We'll then clean it and get rid of a lot of that chaff, but save the stuff. So my goal is to get them a product that is cleanable, but will flow out of the bottom of a seed tote. The problem I was having is it will not flow freely out of even this gravity box, this I call it a seed tender. So it's a 385 bushel box. I have to get in there, it's bridging. It's bridging like crazy because of all the stems. And it was bridging coming out of the combine when I unloaded it. That was my first clue there was a problem. So it's in there now in the gravity box and I was told to away, I have to re-thresh it essentially. So from the gravity box, we come up here, and I made this hopper because initially I was having a hard time getting it to flow through that auger, and I thought I was going to have to put a loader 
and dump it a bucket full at a time into that hopper. So that was a bit of overkill. I wasted a better part of this yesterday, Sunday, dealing with that. Now I'm frustrated right now. I'm making this kind of the, just in the aftermath of the heat of the moment, but this is the the reality of it. And my experience with curtains, are, like I said, this is year three. No one else has been has mentioned this. I'm a member of the co-op. There's kind of private grumblings about it's not what you know you expected or blah blah blah. But there's a lot of happy talk, and I've shared my videos with people, and there there's kind of an embarrassed silence on the other end. Either they think I'm doing something wrong, or you know I'm not doing the technique right, or they have suggestions, but they're not really super helpful. So where does that leave me or us? Because my dad and the family, you know, if I rent the ground from them. It's a partnership. We're business partners that they're involved as well. At this point, there's probably still 200 bushels of kerns in that red gravity box. There's probably 100 bushels in the combine clean grain tank. And there's probably, I don't know what that is on the ground over there, 50 bushels. Um, and I've got a grain cart in the shed over there on the back of that snout of that tractor sticking out with 200 bushels in it maybe 250 unless i get a phone call i've called four people today they're on the various boards of these organizations telling me that hey we've got a magic cure here's what you can do with it i think all this stuff is junk so and to just put some numbers on it there's probably opportunity cost never mind out of pocket cost to grow this stuff conservatively to, out of my pocket ten thousand dollars a year and if you follow ag prices organic or conventional i'm getting 40 percent less for my corn than i was three or four years ago meanwhile all my inputs are up so this idea of this saving the planet and you know experiment it doesn't fit on my farm at this point oh and i've been a guinea pig i've followed all the recommendations and this is going to sound a little whiny and a little complainy but at this point i've deserved i've earned the right to do that um it's been my experience um if anybody else out there has got different experience you're more than welcome to publicize it and share it with me but at this point i haven't heard anything from anybody my dad's standing over here to my right you want to add anything all of that are you comfortable sitting in the background and being the uh, man behind the scenes as it were so that's that. That's the Kernza. I think I've touched on everything I wanted to. Um, supposedly we had a buyer for this stuff in January. I've been hearing about that for a while. But again, even if I can process all this stuff, I don't know the grain quality. If it's going to, the test weight is acceptable. If it's got vomitoxin in it, what quantity, what yield I've got out of all that material. I have no idea what actual amount of grain, if they're fully formed heads, if. Uh, it's such a, and there's no contract for it. There's no, I pay, I pay, I pay, I pay, and hope that something comes in. And people make fun of uh, stock market speculators. I'm like, well, what the hell is this? Except you pretend to be something important. So uh, for me, it's enough. This, I'll, I'll let somebody else run with the ball. And if you can make heads or tails of this and use this somehow in your uh, Kearns of Growing adventure, more power to you. I hope this video comes back to haunt me in a few years when people say, oh, well, this guy moaned about it and we figured it out and he couldn't, well, or didn't want to, or was doing something wrong. Maybe you can see something I'm doing wrong. Very likely. Um, at this point, you know, I don't know what, what else to say or what else to do. It's just kind of... Um, and another big reason for me making this video, as well as to get it off my chest, is also that I've noticed in the old grain, the various organic, nobody really talks about their failures. It's kind of a, I don't want to say this is a failure, I wouldn't say it's a success by any means, but uh, the sweat bees are out here, they're getting me. But it, it's, you know, this is the reality of, and oh, I was fixing that auger, shear bolts. This is the reality of trying to make this work and all the happy talk about regenerative and, you know, carbon sequestration and blah, blah, blah. You need people to actually do the work and, and get some... Obviously, I'm losing money on this. 
for all the happy talk, uh, if you want stuff done, this is the, the, the system we're under. You've got to pay for it. And just, it's just not there at this point. So hopefully this helps somebody. It's helped me get it off my chest. In any event, it's a nice day out. I'm out here with my dad who's over there, Gramps. And we're uh, going to wrap it up for the day. Thanks for listening to my complaints. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.